So in this video, I want to talk about wintertime living in a tiny log cabin. And um, it's, it's actually the most enjoyable time of the year to live in a little cabin like this, um, even in a cold climate such as Montana. So real quickly, I make videos on log cabin building, off-grid living, exploring the backcountry of Montana. So if you like that kind of content, please help me out by subscribing to the channel and liking the videos that you like and leaving comments below. One of the nice things about winter time in the little cabin is you're going to have fire going in the wood stove and that lets you cook in the wood stove. And even a stove as small as this Yodel 102. You can actually cook biscuits and pizzas and different things inside the stove and of course you've got an eye on top of the stove to cook on that. So the way I would make breakfast a lot of times in this little cabin, I would split up quite a bit of wood about this size one by one and build a pretty hot fire in here and build a bank of coals in there. And once you have all the, the wood burnt and it's mainly just coals and not smoky anymore, then you're ready to put in your skillet with the biscuits or whatever. Uh, it's important not to have smoke because that'll taint the taste of the food. So what I normally would do is put a skillet in here and it's a little bit of a tight fit. But that's all right. Try to even up the biscuits so they're going to get kind of even heat. And then to keep the top from browning too quickly, I would shield them with aluminum foil. And then right at the end, after the biscuits are baked, I'll take the aluminum foil off and then brown the top of the biscuits that way. Keep that infrared radiation from burning the top of the biscuits. So we won't close it all the way because the handle's sticking out, but that'll bake just fine like that. Of course, in the winter time, solar power is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. You have a lot less sun. Part of the time, the solar panels are covered up with snow. So you're going to want a good backup generator. And for just a tiny cabin with no well to power, just a small 2,000 watt uh, inverter type generator is recommended. And go ahead and spend the money and buy a good quality generator. I've wasted quite a bit of money on cheap Chinese generators and I've been better off just to go ahead and buy a Honda right off the bat. So I would recommend you do that. So I wanted to show you how I had the little generator shack set up. So this was originally built for a little larger size generator than what I have here. But um, it, it was something I kind of threw together in a hurry and just like the shower, it worked so well that I didn't really see a need to change it. So basically it's just a platform with a box and it's hinged on the back. So I can just stand it up to get to the generator. I don't want to move the generator. Start it. So I can start the generator now and then close this. And the back is totally open, so and the sides have cutouts, so there's plenty of ventilation. And that keeps the weather off of it and makes it really accessible. So that was really handy and good investment of some time there. So the other thing about off-grid living is everybody has concerns about the outhouse. Okay, everybody wants to know about the outhouse situation at the little cabin. So, um... It's actually not that bad using an outhouse. Indoor plumbing is a relatively new invention. For thousands of years, people used other means. Uh, one thing I haven't done and probably would never do is try any kind of composting toilet. To me, the best solution if you don't have normal plumbing is just an outhouse, dig a hole, and bury it when you're done. Um, I don't like the idea of trying to handle that waste and compost especially in the colder climates, I really don't see how that's gonna work. So the tried and true method is the outhouse, uh, it works great. 
And there's a few things you can do to make it a little more comfortable for those who, let's say, may not like the idea of going outside to use the restroom. So one of the best things about, I think, this outhouse is the Dutch door. So this, this makes it a lot more light inside, gives you some good air circulation. Um, and it just makes it a lot nicer, especially when you got a nice view to look at. Um, so I'll show you the inside here. Another important thing is you want to have a very clean, sealed interior so you don't have to worry about spiders and bugs crawling around inside there. And then lastly, you want it vented. So a lot of outhouses will have a, a basically a vent pipe going from the whole area up the wall and out the top. Um, mine's vented a little bit differently and I'll show you that as well. So one thing it's recommended is a spring to keep the door shut. And then also some sort of latch, very simple latch here to hold it. Um, when you're not using it so the wind can't blow the door open. And you really don't want anything too sturdy in case some, somebody came along and decided to lock you in the outhouse. You'd like to be able to push the door open. So this isn't strong enough to really trap anybody inside. So again, on the interior, I'll move the camera a little closer so you can see in here. So pretty basic, but functional. And again, you want to just have something that you can keep very clean and sealed and keep the bugs out. So when it's really cold, it's kind of cold to sit on that plastic seat. So this is actually a pretty good addition. Just to make a little styrofoam seat there. And that really makes a huge difference when it's really cold out. And then you see I have an orange bucket here. That's got some lime in it, powdered lime. And that's good to add every time you use the restroom. Just cover it up and that'll really keep the scent down and keep it a lot more sanitary. Here for a vent, I just have a basic e-vent installed on the wall. This is a conventionally framed structure, so there are two by fours on 16 inch centers. And since there's siding on the outside and wall covering on the inside, there's a hollow cavity here. So that cavity runs right down into the open space where the hole is in the ground. So any vapors or smells coming from the whole area have a way to come up and out. So if the, the lid is closed on the toilet opening, that allows the, the vent to work and the air will come up and out. So you can just vent around the top edge and the stud cavities if it's framed this way. If you have single wall construction, you really have to install that pipe and it has to go through the roof so it's quite a bit more work actually to go that way so uh, there's a couple of good reasons for covering the interior walls it does make the venting a lot easier so our little snowstorm we had last night is gone now and this snow it won't be around for long and that's good because i've got a lot of projects that i want to get started on here soon uh, the first thing i'm going to be doing is building a little knockdown cabin and this will be a fun little project for a lot of people, I think. Um, it's an 8 foot by 8 foot cabin. There's no chinking, so you basically just assemble this like Lincoln Logs. Um, you can take it down really quickly, throw it on a truck or trailer, move it and reassemble it in short order. So another project I've got going this summer, um, it's going to be a much bigger project, and that's to build a new barn out in the pasture. So I've got a load of some really nice big lodgepole logs. I'm going to be milling those into timbers and probably doing a timber frame type barn this summer. So in addition to that, we're going to do a lot of exploring old mines and old cabins up in the mountains. And then I've got some really big news about the mining claim cabin that I think you'll be interested in. Kind of some good news and bad news there, but the good news outweighs the bad. So. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of fun things coming up this summer. See you next time.